My name's James Adams. I've been in the barber game for 15 years. I've worked and trained with some of the best names in the industry across the world. I've had a lot of opportunities put in front of me in my life. Some that have failed and some that have led me on the path I'm on now. One of them was moving to Melbourne, a beautiful city within its own rights. In the last five years, the barber scene has become more popular. The high demand in barber shops and the old school tradition is dying off. Melbourne is lacking a new generation of barbers to bring the industry forward. This is where I come in. I've put together a global team of barbers and we're offering 10 everyday people to come in and train under my program and become part of the London Barber movement. Not only that, we have raised the stakes and added a competition element to the show. There will be a grand final barber battle in front of 2,000 people and the winner of the barber battle will get the chance to open their very own LBM barber store. Now you know what the London Barber movement is all about, let's meet the contestants. Uh, my name is Ray Hunter Tute Campbell, known as Ray, 22 years old. I uh, grew up in a small place called Wife 2 in uh, Wellington, New Zealand. My name is Beth Campbell, I'm 45 years of age and I was born in Geelong, Victoria. My name is Jamie Schultz, I'm 24 and I'm from Moorbark. My name is Ben Taylor, I'm from Sunshine West, I'm 28 years old. My name is Christopher Dargan, I'm 33 years of age, I'm from Condobin, New South Wales. Uh, my name is Lawrence Pahoe, I'm from the western suburbs of Melbourne and I'm 20. Hey guys, my name's Scott, I'm 25 from Ballarat, Victoria. Uh, my name is Nasser Dulma, I'm 19 years old. Hey guys, how's it going? My name's James Duncan, call us JD if you like. Hi, I'm Jamie, I'm 27 and I am originally from Liverpool, New South Wales. Welcome to London Barber Movement Day 1. This is day 1 of your training. You've all been through the process to get where you are today. Um, pretty much today, that's it. You're going and you're getting thrown in the deep end. Each and every one of you are here for a reason. Um, I selected you for a reason because I believe that each and every one of you here could become a good barber. I've seen potential in every one of you. There's different aspects throughout my career that I can pick up on people. and. Each and every one of you have got something that I believe for you to be here and come through my program and put you through the training and give you the skills that you need to be working with me. Grow with seven brothers. It was always hard, but you know, being the middle one, copped a lot of crap, but hey, that's just that's just the way it was back then. Um, didn't grow up much really. My old's done as much as they could to support us. And, you know, seven brothers is pretty tough, but yeah, I'll give it up to them. Um, moved over here about five years ago now. Didn't really have much direction in my life going, going through school and that. Yeah, so I grew up with seven brothers. I'm the middle one, so I copped a lot of, a lot of the beatings in there. You know, I was, I was more of the practice test. Well, what this really means to me is when I met my missus, she likes to travel a lot and I didn't, I'm a homie boy, so I didn't, I'm not into that type of thing. But we went to Bali for a holiday and already wanting to be a barber kind of said to me like if I can be a barber get all the skills that I need to be a barber we can travel as much as she wants but still there's those opportunities of working in someone else's shop so I can carry my career with me <laughs> like just scissors and clippers you know and uh, for a long time in my life I've done so many things in, in 45 years I've I've had so many amazing experiences but I got to a stage in my life where I didn't have a reason to get up in the morning. Um, you know, my past and the journey along, there's a lot of grief that you go through and I just felt that my reason for getting up was gone. And so when this opportunity came along, I had a couple of people say to me, Beck, you'd be really great in barbering. You know, you've got the look, you've got the passion for it, you've got the artistic creativity for it, and you're amazing with people. And so I had a look at what I wanted to do. And it was either this or tattooing, um, you know, apart from the mediumship that I actually do do, and I'll never ever give that up because it's a part of who I am. 
uh, you know, I sort of looked at it and when I saw the ad and I thought, you know what, I'm going to have a go at this. I'm 45 years of age, uh, but it's never too, too late to grab that dream. It's never too late to run with it. And so I thought, well, you know, the least I'm going to get out of this is an amazing experience. I'm doing it for myself now. Uh, you know, it is a competition and I acknowledge that. But if there's one thing that I can leave this competition, it's with the inspiration for everybody out there watching that's my age, a little bit older, a little bit younger, anybody that, you know, has this, this, I can't do this because I want to bring that, yeah, you can. You know, you never, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down in life, what matters is that you get back up and give it a go. As I tell everybody, everyone's entitled to one fuck up, yeah? But you're only going to get one and then it's going to catch ass whoopings all day long. I'm not going to be telling you the same thing over and over and over again. I haven't got time for that. It's just I'm going to run through some cleaning with you in the shop, how I want it to be done, when I want it to be done, and the standard I want it to be done as well. Um, you can new use newspaper as well. Newspaper is a really good way to do it, but we just haven't got any at the moment. Um, we can get some of that in anyway, and just keep like just get all the marks off. Just get in there. Make sure all the hairs out the nooks and crannies. I'm a qualified painter and decorator. I got that job by walking into a pub one day, sitting down with two blokes having a beer, and I just sort of fell into the job and. I stayed in that job for four years. It was probably the worst job I had and ended up hating it. Um, yeah, my hobbies are, you know, hot rods and Harleys. I grew up, you know, in the shed with my grandpa, watching him restore old cars. So I love going to hot rod shows, looking at Harleys. I love the noise. I love, you know, the sound. I like watching cars get painted. You know, I love tattoos. Obviously, I'm covered in tattoos. So I've been stabbed. I've died twice, been brought back to life. Um, a year and a half ago, I lost my mum to heroin. Um, my whole life I had my mum heroin addiction. She got clean for 13 years and then a year and a half ago relapsed and we lost her so it was, it was pretty tough. It was really hard, you know, having her clean for so long and then losing her again. It was, it was tough on the whole family. You know, I was going around to a lot of barber shops, you know, sort of asking for an apprenticeship and getting knocked back a lot and there's not really an avenue for it. There's no real way to get into it and it's a good opportunity and here I am. Out of all the family, I'm one of three, and I'm the only male, so I have two sisters. Brittany is 17, just turned last week, and my other sister, Kirsty, is 25, 26. Not too sure, I'm not the best brother, but yep. And um, she's a security guard, my other sister's studying at the moment. My mum's a stay-at-home mum, she's a bit ill, she's not the most able to get around, so I've more or less helped take care of her, run the house. Um, cook dinner, so on and so forth. My dad, I found out, wasn't my dad when I was 11 years old by my asshole cousin. Thought it would be funny to be like, ha ha, did you know that Mick's not your dad? I'm like, what? <laughs> and had to ask questions and found out, not the happiest family, as I said. Um, my dad's never been around. He found out my mum was pregnant and took off. From there, as I was saying, um, yeah, I just made sure that I tried to have the best of the best, whether it was the brains, whether it was the money, whether it was something I had to provide. My goals in life in general is to own a franchise, world, worldwide franchise, of, as I was saying, tattooing, body piercing, like an essential beauty on crack. <laughs> I need this because straight up, I want my life goal. My life goal is my business, yeah? I need that to make money. I need this to get there, to be able to step up to the next level and open my business. I want to leave no, I don't want to. I am going to leave my mark on this world. I live in Brisbane at the moment. I've got my five kids. I'm a single parent. Well, my kids, I've got four girls and I've got one boy. The age between 11 and three. So, um, they mean the world to me. They, you know, like everything I do is for my kids. Um, yeah, my kids are just my life. Like, I'm a family man, yeah. Okay, the oldest is Kiriana. She's 11. Um, we got Anakia, she's 10. Kristen, he's 8. And then yeah, she's 6, yeah. 5, yeah. And uh, Corinne, she's, well, she's 4. Um, 
on the weekends where we just chill like what most families do. Um, what is like they love what every other kids love, like going out, being with their parents and family time. I'm here to make myself proud and to make them proud, like my family proud, like to give my kids something to look forward to in life, um, like to break that stereotype of, um, of that, um, the white Australian deception on, on black people. Yeah, it's like just, just uh, um, uh, what is it like? Show my kids they can do whatever, like, what, whatever they want. Mm. What, what, what do you want? What does Chris like? Me? Oh, fuck. Give him a moment. He's turning about his kids, I know, I feel, I feel upset as well, man. Brother, come on, man. Hey. Come on, love, we're good, man. You got this, alright? So, why you're here for your kids, so I chose you so you can be here for your kids, alright? You're here, brother, alright? Take a minute, man. Take a minute, bro. Can't say I've got um, absolute no experience in barbering. Um, I've never been taught everything that I've learnt or done is I taught myself or YouTube, you know. Um, six months time, I'd love to be um, you know, like cutting good hair, making some good money. Um, maybe. You know, managing a shop somewhere in Brisbane, or if London Bubba was to go to Brisbane, that would be awesome. Um, six months here, yeah, just cutting good hair. Twelve months, I'd probably say teaching, um, teaching kids, other Indigenous men around Brisbane or anywhere that I'm in the area at the moment. Like, uh, yeah, just teaching Indigenous people about what I bring um, more or less just yeah, provide for my family and teaching my brothers and sisters, yeah. To the introduction to the show, what your roles are in this industry, how important you guys are to me and what you do in the shop makes my life easier, which makes the shop run better. Um, and what else did we learn today? We learned how to pump up chairs. Hold the chair, control the chair. That's it. Round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. We learned how to clean tools, we learned the importance of cleaning the tools and having the section set up ready for the barber in the morning when they come in for the next shift. Also, by doing that you'll learn how to clean your own workstations. The whole point of me showing you how to look after me is so when you be able to cut hair you'll be able to look after yourselves. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so there's a, everything that's happening, is happening for a reason. Back in high school I just knew I wasn't the office type so um... I was always just like in class, just drawing. Either drawing or sleeping, really. So um, I, I used to cut my mates' hair back in high school, and then I never really thought about it as a career until um, one of my friends suggested that I um, look look into barbering. So I looked into doing a course, and I did a course last year in in September, and then it just started from there. I just, as I researched more into the industry, I just like it liked it some more, and. Um, started cutting my mates in the garage and just started looking for work but in Australia there's no apprenticeship for it and um, yeah that's why I found out about the London Barber Movement and um, uh, sent in my application and yeah just gave my best shot. Um, at the moment I'm working in a supermarket as a checkout operator, been doing that for around five years now, um, sort of over it to a degree and just like looking to expand my horizons and find something I can like do with passion that's why I want to do barbering. Well, the reason I like barbering is it, I feel like it allows you to help someone create a new image for themselves and like change the way they feel, you know, I feel like the look of someone can really sort of help them feel good about themselves and I want to be able to help create that. So, uh, I learned like a lot of the basic techniques but nothing really overly complicated, just like, you know, I'd like to be able to learn things that are sort of more advanced techniques and that will allow me to sort of, you know, become a better barber like get more experience and knowledge that I can put towards myself in a, you know, my career. Good morning guys, how you doing? Good, 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 good. Everyone happy? Everyone, everyone up this morning, bright and early? Today we are going to go over some tools of the trade. We're going to go through some super tapers, um, the detailers, the berets and the wall legends. 
shaving cream, which would then help lubricate the skin. Hair on the teeth. has a straight edge which will cut 100% of the time. The teeth, 50% of the hair will fall on the blade and will get cut, which means you're only cutting half of the hair away, then actually gives you that thinning effect or that texturizing effect. Um, my current job is um, laboring, doing pool tiling, rendering. Yeah, it's been doing that for a few months now. I just came back from New Zealand, just cutting in a barber shop for about a year and a half. Yeah, I dropped out of school end of year 11 um, to start cutting. I was cutting in the bathroom for about two years and then I moved to New Zealand for about a year and a half. I was cutting there and I come here for this, for the show. I feel with Jay and this program, I can be where I want to be. Right now I'm here. If I stay here, then I won't go anywhere. But with this program, I'm just going to progress, get better. My dad's a culprit. He's been in it since he was a little kid. Um, I used to knock around with him in the shop back in the days, just there and watch him work with his hands. It inspired me to sort of get more hands on. Uh, it's sort of passed down through the family generation. Uh, the way things have worked out in life, I haven't sort of got to where I wanted to get to, been misguided, misled, and obviously get myself to fight through the shit. Here I am, and obviously it's going to mean a lot to me to work beside him or actually just make him proud and become a barber, have something there for me to look back on. Some of my previous roles and hobbies have been well, mainly in customer service and in office work. Um, being locked in four walls is not my cup of tea. I don't enjoy it at all. I like being on my feet and working face to face with people. Uh, so I decided to branch out from that. The main reason why I want to get into barbering and obviously learn from the best and, and be the best is for my son. Uh, I, I want to be a good person for my son and I want to build a career that's going to allow me to spend time with him um, and just be happy. I want to be doing something that I'm good at and that I can be happy doing and obviously you know, be a happy mum for my son. This is uh, the super taper. And, um Super Tapper, uh, when it's closed, it's uh, a little bit shorter than a normal clipper, so it just gives you that really close to the skin taper. Cleaning your clippers and um, just getting all the hair out from the bristles. Normally you would have hair around here, you just brush it off like that, get in. So originally that was just for close shaves for men back in the day, and now disposable due to like um, hygienic reasons. Um, yeah, this is just a I've been for you sharps and yeah. Okay guys, so what we're doing here, I'm gonna get the guys today doing some scissor over comb techniques. Um, we're keeping it old school, keeping it um, gully, London, old fashioned style. Um, we're gonna keep it outside the shop, we're gonna do it on the window. Um, just so they've got something square to work against and so we can explain to them exactly how to do scissor over comb and brickwork with their scissor patterns. your thumb. Notice how my thumb is using is pivoting the scissors. So start at the top, in, lift, scoop. Remember how I was telling you about holding the cone on Monday, on Tuesday? Yep. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes people don't use pinky rest, you can hold scissors like this and curl your finger up to keep the balance of the scissors. Another thing what I'm going to teach you guys to do as well is um, club cutting. That's very important. So we'll always start from here and even from the front. We're imagining there's a square. We're going straight up. So we go in, straight up. When I know Lawrence has got no hair. Then what we do is we take, we go in, scoop, take the hair, pull the section up to the length we want, put the comb that way in, and then we'll cut the hair there, yeah? Make 
making sure we go in and then I'm going in and then I'm coming out ever so slightly. We can't come out at a 45 degree angle because the hair's short, right? So we just go in and then go out until it's straight up. So we're just going in and I'm just going, always keeping the comb and cutting at a square angle. Around this bone at the back of the head will always be a bit of a darker patch. So you can always just take it down. When you finish, just step back, just have a look. Okay, cool, that looks all right. So I'm glad that everybody's learned something today. Um, we've done a little look and learn class today with myself, just a quick fade um, workshop there, look and learn. Talked you through a little bit of um, doing a skin fade. I learned that um, with the legend clippers that the blade is not called a stagger tooth, it is a wedge blade. I learned to actually see what I learned yesterday applied on an actual head. Yeah. So for me that was really good because I could see what I was doing yesterday yeah. and the process yesterday and how it, it applies today on a proper cool. head. I learned that the super tapers, the blades are the in blades line, it's on the angle. Cool. Just put your scissor in first, take it out and then put the comb in and come out at a 45 degree angle and then cut. Perfect. Keep everything straight, boxed out um, and the difference between like, the clippers and what they do. Okay guys, well done. Thank you ever so much for today. Well done everybody, I'll see you next week. So we're getting somewhere. The ball is rolling. You've met all the guys on my show and what we're about here at London Barber Movement. The journey has only just begun. Tune in next time to see who's up on the chopping block, who's been causing trouble on social media. Because I've given fucking 10 chances at interviews. I've given chances all day long. There's shit money out all day long. Is that what you think? Because I don't. And which contestant was first to be eliminated from the London Barber movement? Look at your line out. Look at any scissor marks. <clears throat> One minute 30.